Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast presented by Zwift. Here with Benji as always for the UAE Tour. All the stages this week, starting with stage one, but we've got sprints. We have a team time trial, uh, which was introduced. That's coming up. There's the her feet finish and the last stage. But really, this is the world champs of sprinters. So, Benji, it's been a long while since a race recap since Cadell Evans. I think that's the last one, maybe. Who have we got here? No Pagacha. Like, yep. that's the big surprise. Who isn't here? Yep, exactly. Everybody was expecting UAE Tour to arrive once again with Pogacar on their team because this is one of the more important races for that team in their season. But instead, they've got a pretty stacked squad still available. Adam Yates, Jay Vine, Brandon McNulty, Soler, all lining up for this team together with a sprinting option in Molano, I would say, with some other domestiques throughout. But... The competition is also pretty good. Remco Evenepoel for Quick Step, combined with Metal Eater for the sprints there. Luke Plapp for Ineos. Can he compete? Because last year, I remember that infamous tweet you sent out where Plapp is the, the next generation tweet. GC rider better than Evenepoel and so forth. Do you think he'll prove it this week? I mean, he might prove it for my purposes in being able to quote tweet that tweet uh, with a <laughs> mini victory lap, but I think... I think I'm behind on the scoreboard so far. Remco had a half-decent year last year. Um, but yeah, it's UA's still got a strong squad. Vine and Yates being here means like they have to be on if Pog's not being brought here. But it's the Sprinters Deluxe. The only ones we're missing are Jakobsen and Philipson. I'm sure I'm missing somebody big. We've got Damar, Groenewegen, Wellsford's now up in that tier, Coy, Viviani, Cavendish, Merlier... Uh, Jensen Plowright, Phil Bauhaus, Gaviria, who's looked re- really, really good. It's a, even Milano, it's a really stacked sprint field. And stage one, which we'll get into now, is from Aldafra Castle to Almir for 153Ks. Now, this stage, I look back through the history of UAA Tour. I did that because I... I've been really bored. Like I watched every single one of the Flanders classics, like yeah. Flanders best of ones. I've been watching. I've been <laughs> desperate, so I went and looked at every UAE stage used in the history of the UAE tour. Um, this stage they haven't used that many times. They used it in 2021, and that's when Quick Step split it, brought MVDP with them, and David Decker when he was on Yumbo, and the women's race did this exact parkour last week, and it was shattered. And so we were expecting crosswinds. It was going to affect both GC and who could go for the win. Oh, Bennett's also here with the Bora train. I forgot to mention them. Bennett, the Bora train is the strongest. But yeah, it kicked off Benji. Well, before we get into that, actually, I'll mention what kicked off on the weekend. The UCI Esports World Championships on Zwift. That was the one thing that was able to tide me over. The men's race won by Bjorn Andreessen, a young Dane. Now, I saw some tweets about his power data. I would like to see him... I don't know. I think something worth looking into. Looked very, very good. Looked like a... Could he be the next Jay Vine type operator? And the women's race won by Lois Arheist, who we mentioned as one to watch, which wasn't a hot take because she won the Cadelvin's road race yeah. in really impressive fashion. So like, I mean, she was probably the favorite, but yeah, interesting to see those two Benji. I mean, Arheist, she, I think she'll go on to big things this year. I don't think Cadell's was just an isolated thing. And I think the Zwift worlds is another evidence of that. I think so as well, but it's very curious to see like the, the riders that have world tour contracts in those races, try and beat the riders like Zoe Langham, for example, who is not riding for a World Tour team. So that's the fun intrigue, I think, for, for the Zwift World Championships as well in there. But how about we start talking uh, about the race today? Okay, it's there was some bootleg stream, but then GCN coverage, I think, started way later. But the, the Arabic commentators got me hyped up. There was crosswind <laughs> chaos i think there was a crash that split it in group one we had people missing it was even there with no teammates as well as uh glog for yumbo visma plap with tarling and viviani bill bow was there missing yates uh who else was missing vine mcnulty so uae not looking too good 
as well as Ewan, Wellsford, Merlier from the Sprinters, and uh, Rain Tarame, who was good on uh, Jabal Chase last year. Gaviria was in Group 3. I thought Group 1 and 2 were going to go all the way, and yet suddenly Benji, Quickstep were chasing in Group in group two, but did you see why did like who actually caused the split? Because I was surprised to see Melia not in group one. Well, it kicked off directly at the start. Like we saw the riders go through kilometer zero banner, the official start in the race, and directly Bahrain moved to the front. Then we saw the speed in the peloton just increase significantly, exponentially, to the point where people got nervous, tried to move up, and so forth. And that's where things can happen, including. Sp- crashes and we saw a crash roughly halfway the peloton that did increase the the possibility of splits happening because because of that crash riders are behind already in group three but next to that the Bahrain pace kept going afterwards which it's not their fault they can do so they were already started before the crashes happened and the next shot was basically three groups four groups on the road five groups on the road and we were starting with those echelons and you you named the names quick step was pacing in group two like you said for Melir but the biggest losses, like you mentioned as well, is Adam Yates. And it's it's a sign that we've seen in previous years as well with Adam Yates, where he sometimes would lose out on the echelons and therefore would endanger his GC in the OE Tour. I think they saved that last year at a certain point when he was in his second echelon. But this time around, being in that second echelon, which the gap went up, the gap went towards like two minutes at a certain point. And yeah, with quick step pacing in the second group, let's talk about that for a second. They've got Avnipol in the front group. They've got... Yates, who is their main competitor, I would say, for GC in Group 2, should they be pacing in Group 2 in paper? No. Unless they believe they can win the sprint with Melir, but is that valuable compared to the GC of Evenepoel already being decided in in Stage 1? But one factor that I want to mention and ask you, do you think this was proper pacing, or was this the kind of pacing where you ride with the echelon to keep the echelon going? Initially, I thought, yes, they're just... Because Ineos were riding too with Swift and Tullet, where it's like, if you don't rotate, you're going to put yourself in a spot of bother and maybe someone's going to drop the wheel because they're annoyed with you. So initially, I thought, yes, but then they turned into a cross headwind and Quickstep was still drilling it and driving it with Van Leerberger and Seri. So at that point, I was like, no, and Ineos stopped at that point. So obviously, it's risky. You bring back Yates, you bring back Ewan, Groenewegen, and when you get back to Group 1, who's going to keep the pace going? Because Bahrain were drilling it, all of Jumbo were committed, Ineos were pulling. Does that continue when Merlier returns, or do they all look at quick step? And that was answered pretty shortly. So they turn into this sort of headwind section, they start going so slow. Group 1, yeah, they're not pulling as hard. Quick step come back, and I think the intermediate sprints also broke up the momentum. We should mention then the intermediate sprints where, yeah, Plap one-upped Remco. Remco on the first one launched, I think, like 350 meters to go in the wind, um, which is ambitious. I think it might have been Hajduk doing the lead-out for uh, Plap, but he didn't do a good job continuing his sprint to take away seconds, actually, afterwards. Bill Bow was there. He's very good in them. So already GC looked like Bill Bow, Plap, Remco, maybe Glog at this point. Uh, and the first three were going for those intermediate sprints. Plap then took more seconds out of Bilbao and Remco in the second sprint. But yeah, 20 seconds. Listen, like, will Remco get attacked in the final if they don't stay away? I don't know. I I wouldn't have done it. Does that mean I'm wrong in hindsight? Maybe. <laughs> Once we get into the rest of this stage, I didn't... Maybe if they knew they could re-split it with more numbers later then what they're doing makes sense because yeah. they didn't want Remco to be outnumbered in the finish. And that's, they come back, it all stops because no one wants to pull with quick step. Mihalovic, I think, Fran's on the front for Bahrain. Yeah. He's talking to Vivaika saying, are you guys going to pull? Vivaika's like, meh, not really. And that's suspicion number one. Quick step are barely even keeping it going to the sprint, which they normally yeah. would. The group, 1 million with GC Coos. I thought GC Coos died on the ground. Um, those dreams. He got back up. He got back into that group. GC Coos is on. Uh, as well as Vine. They came back. They were all coming back. Gaviria Cup was coming back. It's a full peloton again. Suspicious. Why would Quickstep allow this? Because they've gone from a 
pretty good situation to now status quo of the neutral zone. All of a sudden, bang, they re-split it. Anyone not near quick step was getting blown apart yep. when the wind maybe changed. And we saw Bahrain there again, Ewan in there, Cavendish in there, and Luke Platt, Benji, insane bridge. <laughs> like Insane bridge. Yeah. It's like, when we remember that World Championships in Qatar, back in the day where Sagan had to bridge up to the front echelon, like... Because in a lost position, because he was already on a gap, that's exactly what happened with Luke Plapp and Olaf Koy here. I don't know. I'm giving most of the props to Plapp because he closed the gap with Koy in his wheel, but I'm guessing it's still an effort for Koy to stay in that wheel of Plapp while he's doing that effort. So also props to Koy, but Plapp, man, absolute monster wants to get that group caught, and he's in the front group now. And talking about the ride, as you mentioned, yeah, quick step is in there. Evenepoel, Merlier, and Von Lederberg. So a lead out for Merlier and Evenepoel for GC. Cavendish with Bol as lead out. We've got Bauhaus with Arndt as lead out. Koi without the lead out. And Ewan with Drizners as a lead out. And if this group would keep going from that point onwards, I think it's an advantage for riders like Ewan and Cavendish compared to having a regular sprint because their sprint trains are not that strong, in my opinion, Astana and Lotto. So True. the smaller the group, the better the chance of being in a good position unless your lead out still blocks you in the end. But We'll talk about that during the sprint. <laughs> anyway, you ain't missing out I again. I agree. For Ewan, isn't this the perfect size group? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, he doesn't, if he's fighting with literally hundreds of people who are fresh when it's been an easy stage, it's so hard. And his guys can't move yeah. him up. This is perfect for him. He actually at least gets to open his sprint and, Calf two. and try. Because yes. we saw the sprint that... Saudi tour? Oman, stage Oman, one. Oman. I keep twisting those around. My bad. Uh, uh, we saw the sprint where he got blocked by his own lead out. So in a group like this, it's less likely to get blocked by your lead out, but it might still happen. Spoilers. Anyway, let's keep talking about today's race. Well, Yumbo lost out. Yumbo yep. lost out too because they had Globe G1 earlier. He yep. then is bridging across and they can't make it. Plat rides them off. They lose their GC guy of that group. So that's a loss for them. But... They didn't pace in the group behind. They had four riders. They didn't really keep pacing. So they're Koi. obviously happy with the Koi situation. Um, but anyway, that was a loss for him. Yates and UA, the big losers here, Benji. Milano yep. wasn't in group one, dropped out of it. Yates is now losing time. Bjerg is trying to get to the front and they're losing buckets of time. Like Avonapol was pulling, Bahrain were fully committed, I think. So the GC guys in group one, Bilbao, Plap, Remco. But there's a lot of sprinters. So it's not like Merlier has now got a walk in the park situation. Yep. Dangerous sprinters here. We've got Bold for Cav, as you said, Drizness for Ewan. Coy's not really contributing. Merlier's talking to him, being like, come on. He pulls through sometimes, pulls through, doesn't at other times. One time, Plap and Remco went clear. It was with three Ks to go now, coming to the finish. They've got a minute gap. They can play a little bit. Everyone's pretty much working well. No attacks. Govacar's uh, been dropped from working. So there's just one lead out for Bauhaus. Remco goes clear. I think Merlier dropped the wheel just to be like, Drizners, you close this. And he forced Drizners to close it. Now, remember in this finish, there's a right-hand bend, 300 meters to go. MVDP came into that in good position in 2021 and just nuked Viviani and Merku. And the same with Vibas when Garishi helped her the other yep. week. It's all about that corner. Who do we see at the back, Benji? Merlier. Now, yep. Combs was like, oh, it might not be for Merlier. He's a bit tired. No way, right? Nah, nah. <laughs> it was looking like he was talking to Von Lederberg just in front of them. They were waiting because they know that there's a team that's going to pick this up too slow, fast. There's a team, that, a rider that's going to pick it up too fast at the front that's going to keep on pacing. They still have Remco in there that keeps on going a bit at the front. Bahrain did that. So they basically can be that wave that crosses past everybody going into the final corner. Well, the decisive lead-out corner. And that might happen in the end. But what did you see when it comes to Case Ball and Cavendish there? Ball looked pretty fucked, I thought. And th this is the thing, right? Bowl won that Pyrenees stage, ruined Pedersen 2021. When yep. Bowl gets it right, he can drop, I'm sure, huge five-second peak. Big guy. Uh, let's settle down. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe it, Astana. <laughs> but he's not like... Van Poppel pre-lead-up man was a consistent, mediocre sprinter. 
at world tour level. That's not be, that's what he was. He wasn't a consistent world tour winner. He was like fifth to seventh, but he was consistent, good positioning. Bowl's not that guy. Bowl can randomly win a Tour of Britain stage. He'll win one a year, but he's tired or too tired a lot of the finishes. Uh, similar with Bennett today. Bennett told Bohr not to pull in Group 2, I'm pretty sure, because he was stuffed. He'd been in Group 1, and then he was cooked, I think. Van yep. Poppel was asking him to go and pull. So Bowl's now Cav's got a... I was saying it at 5Ks. Don't follow Bowl. Everyone, Malia's suspicious. He's at the back with Van Leeuwenhoek. They are going to come up Mullen Bennett style, hard and fast, late, and dive bomb that corner. That's they know. Everyone knows that corner's there. Be on his wheel, if any wheel. And no one did. No yep. one did. Maybe because they were f- messing with Ewan at the front. I think Coy was hyper focused on Ewan. Cavendish is trusting Bowl. And the thing is, Benji, like it's UA Tour, not the Tour de France yet. We're in February. Do you imagine your Cav and you say, "Nah, mate." I don't trust you and just goes to Merlier's wheel. Like that's also tough first race together. I mean, he should have. Yeah. But then why do you sign bowl? That's a good question. But in these sprints, like we saw it in Oman, we see it here today that the lead out is actively hindering Kevin, this chances to win this race. Of course, it's like they go into this corner and Bull goes into this corner with Cavendish in the wheel and Bull kind of like stays in the corner while he's not fast enough. So Cavendish can't go past, can't even get to a wheel at that point or he has to go around the ball. Well, so, Van Leeuwenhoek ruined him. Yeah, that's that's the issue today. Because eh? if Cavendish leads his own way there, is following wheels his own way there, he's got a better position going into the final straight and he can actually maybe compete for the victory. If they went pilot mode, Malia is the man to beat. I think everyone knew that before the stage. From a big group, from a small group. Merlier's the man to beat on Merlier's wheel, and he sits behind him. I think you can have a good outcome. And I think that's what they should be doing in other stages. They don't do that. They're on the inside. Van Leber comes like a train around the outside. They cut off everyone else safely. And I already am like, it's going to be tough for Merlier to lose from this position. Second wheel through that. It's still 250 to go out of there, I think. And then Koi gets pinched inside. Cav gets pinched inside. Ewan swings out before the corner. He doesn't... And goes straight to Merlier's wheel. This gives him a real chance. Merlier opens up through the corner. Ewan in the draft comes out. But he's not coming out of the wheel, coming alongside that quickly. And it's a photo finish on the line between Merlier and Ewan. Ewan celebrates. He did... 10 meters after the line, he was ahead, but I don't know how he was. He was very confident. I mean, Wout was celebrating, so and they gave Amstel to him. So I think you should yep. celebrate. Always celebrate if it's a photo. Always. And it's worth it because they might just give it to you, except in this case. And I thought, wow, has Ewan, because impressive strength from Ewan and making group one. And then we have this, we see the photo finish. It's identical. Like, and it, I've only seen one of the photos. Is that right, Benji? Have you seen... I've only seen one image of the photo. I've only seen the finished uh, photo that they showed on screen for the for the majority of the time after the race finished. If there's a, a more in-depth photo finished by now, I haven't seen it. But based on that picture, they're exactly the same. Maybe there's some software that they use behind the scenes to zoom even more. But just as a, a recap of what a photo finish is, a photo finish is not just a picture from by the side of the road. Every, like, vertical line on the picture is a millisecond or something. Uh, where a snapshot yeah. is taken, so it's it's not just that they can zoom on a, on that picture. They can technically also zoom on a finished photo to try and see if the milliseconds, if there's like a millisecond difference. But I couldn't see a single difference in in this. So maybe behind no. the scenes they have a better way of figuring out the winner, a better finished photo of like a ten thousandth of a second. Maybe that is out there, but I haven't seen that. But on this picture, based on this picture, there's only one solution. Bitcock wins, right? <laughs> I think so. I think that's the only way to make Amstel Gold right. <laughs> and I mentioned, have we seen... Because I swear in Amstel Gold, we got shown different images. Yeah. And remember the photo of the two fellas in the truck, or sorry, <laughs> maybe a man and a woman, or two women in the truck, who were looking at the screen and kind of like pointing, and they just gave it to Wow um, within like 15 seconds, and then they gave it to Cosmic Friday the next year. The... 
I couldn't tell the difference here. And we waited and waited and waited. Ewan thought he'd won. Then Merlier's like, maybe I've won. Then he's celebrating. They're going into the interview zone for the winners together. Ewan and Merlier looking at the screen. Both of them 100% don't know that they've won. <laughs> they think it's a dead heat. Malir, Zero chance. Melia was literally looking at the pictures, the image on screen there he next to Ewan. And he said to Ewan, we win both. Ha ha ha. And he started laughing. <laughs> they should have won both. Well, it was a... <laughs> technically, no. Well, we don't know that what heat. image they've seen, but... That heat is not, they win both, eh? Exactly. So <laughs> this is now, I mean, the conspiracy starts here. <laughs> if there's a dead heat, Luke found in the rules for us, if there's a dead heat in the UCI guide, I'll read it out, two races are classified as dead heat when they cross the line finish line precisely together. In the event of a dead heat, for the purpose of awarding a title after a road event, i.e. the win... The riders will be separated in accordance with the following. The two riders will race against each other <laughs> over a distance of 1,000 meters from a standing start. Now then, when I found this out, and then when they didn't award a dead heat, I was so pissed. Yeah. This was, I, I wanted to watch Ewan and Melier ride a 1,000 meter race against each other so badly. Yeah. Unless, unless like win. the rules specify that this is only for like a championship, because awarding a title is that is that a win or is that a championships title? Yeah, maybe it's <laughs> maybe it's like for a world championships. <laughs> yeah, not UAE tour stage well, one. Well, technically, and the Sprinter just... World Championships is UAE tour. So on paper, exactly. I believe they should do a dead heat anyway for the fans of it. I want to see that. I want to see Merlier and you and just one v one, like. Will they be surplusing, like standing next to each other, trying waiting to? They don't have a lead out here. Eh? <laughs> Merlier opens it up early, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> he he goes from two fifty. I don't know. I I wanted to see it so badly. We're all denied this. <laughs> Listen, for real talk though. I, I would love to see the death. But they eventually, sorry, they give the race to Merlier. No one knows how. After Amstel twice. After. There's another... Who's the Norwegian guy that got... Uh, Norwegian got, Championships, got take, I think. Yeah, Vida like got robbed. Yeah. Because they didn't have a photo, photo finish at that Championships. Okay, that's different. That's <laughs> I have zero confidence that Merlier won. Same. But it's like... We can say something after the sprint. Merlier's on paper, on point. He's good at the moment. He's on a good level. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's going to win... More races in the season. And Caleb Ewan displays that his legs are not fucked, that he's not a terrible rider now, that he's not washed, and that he can still win races. With all the riders in that group, I think there's a lot of things we can mention, like Cavendish with Bull. He got... Cav was good. Yeah. He, he made group one. He got hindered by his lead out again for the second time this year. I think they can get it right at some point this year, but Cavendish would have sprinted better if they were sprinting with him just piloted by ball to a wheel, and then from that wheel goes Cavendish. But hey, that's not what happened, yeah. and his result is not that amazing. But outside of that, there's not much else we can say about the sprint. It's just they were equally as strong, Melira and Ewan, I'd say, for the sprint, and whoever won in reality, I don't know. Maybe it is Melira. No, maybe Melira's the strongest. Maybe they have someone on... Melira's the fastest man yeah. in the world. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Philipson? Ewan was in the draft. Why is Philipson not here? True. They've got Plow right here and not He's Groves. doing Omlop. He's doing Omlop. True. So that that's the problem. They've got Plow right here. Yeah. Coy, just on the final corner, Coy kind of stuffed it a bit because he was, yeah, he then entered it like fifth wheel wide. He never got a chance to sprint, but Merley looked faster. I don't know. I, like if they show a zoomed in a different, you just said they can't zoom in. If they show a different photo finish, <laughs> They were, you can see Merlier's one, yep. and that's why they've decided. Yeah. Then, fine. I, no problem. Zero problem. He won. We just haven't seen but it yet. But we need to see that. If after 20 minutes... We're the viewers um, of a cycling race. We no, need no. to know who wins. Dude, I said this before. In horse racing, they don't just keep the photo finished to themselves. <laughs> it has to be shown so people understand. Like, we've all watched this event for hours. We want to know why that person won. I hope that just after 20 minutes, they didn't didn't just keep looking at the same image and decide Merlier won. Because if you haven't figured it out after 15, then it's a dead heat. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, crazy, crazy stage. <laughs> I thought it was, it was crazy. Then I thought it was going to be boring. Then there was another group with echelons, and then the finish didn't disappoint. But yeah, Merlier had a Ewan Cavendish, Coy Arndt, Bauhaus, Plap, Evan Paul, Bill Bow, Bowl. Uh, Plap takes a few bonus seconds over Remco. He's three seconds ahead of him and Bill Bow. Tomorrow's stage is the TTT from Khalifa Port to Khalifa Port. That's, is it a TTT? Yeah, it is. 17.3K. Yeah, it's a it's uh, not now and back. It's got three turns, about one of which you might need to use your brakes for. <laughs> uh, the wind direction, not sure exactly, but it's pancake flat. It's If there is wind, it's exposed. It's got water on both sides. It's in a port, as the name would suggest. So there's a U-turn. Who you got, Benji? Quick step. They don't have Lampard here. It's not even their best lead-out train. There's no Casper Pedersen. Ineos is strong with Tarling. Who you got? I, I think that Ineos is going to have a really good one. I think I'm looking at... Well, it's going to be GC teams that will matter a lot on this one, but I also expect, ba- expect Bahrain to have a good one here with Prisa Pietras and also pretty really? good at TT. Wild Pools, Govacar, Miholjovic. Those riders are pretty good on the flat. The equipment, though. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that, that's true. I uh, yeah I agree there. I think Ineos will just be really good here. That's the main thing. I think we should also talk about uh, more about Quickstep, where that team is not terrible either when it comes to time trials. Cherny is pretty strong as well. Schmidt can can be a oh, pretty no, good, good engine. So it's gonna be Ineos, Quickstep, um, and when it comes to the other teams, then I'm looking at how can X. we expect UAE to do? Because like Jay Vine, did, did well, he they got to try? The or? Because he was in Group 3 for a while. I don't know. I'm waiting for... Results. It's still only the top 10 results. <laughs> so I don't know what happened when they got blown off the road. Like, I think they're at about 56 seconds. He's at best 56 seconds back. Yeah. But UAE got to try. They got to go at least gaining time on one of Quickstep or Ineos. It's definitely Bahrain they have to be yeah. because they need to at least finish on the podium of GC on this race and attacking on her feet is tough. You have to get to get riders off the wheel. You know, J- Jamel Jais, you aren't gaining time except for bonus seconds, maybe. So they do have powerhouses like Langen, Björk, McNulty, Milano, Soler, Vine, even Adam Yates. They're all strong, but yeah, we'll see. They should really be going for, you know, top three in the TT tomorrow. I'm going to go with Ineos yeah. Benji. Ineos wins. Like I think Viviani's a lovely TTT rider. Tarling's a complete animal. Plap is motivated. Yeah, I'm going with Ineos. Because usually when it comes to TTTs, we're like, Yumbo, where's Yumbo? Where's Yumbo? But Sepp Gus, Hofstede, those are riders not necessarily being the fastest in those time trials. Yeah. Von der Sande, Rose and Koi, that's a sprint train. Not the best lead out either. No chance. Glog might be pretty good at time trial, but I haven't seen it yet, or at least I don't remember, remember it. And then Hesmond's a pretty nah. good time trial is, but this team in total won't won't be making it against the likes of nah. Ineos, I think. So I'm looking at Ineos to win, Quick Step to be relatively close, and then despite the equipment, I feel like Bahrain might still be close because of the quality of their riders. Yeah, yeah, they still got good powerhouses. Um, and they, they're going to be super motivated, and Bill Bow will just top three in another World Tour GC. That's yeah. the sort of rider he is. Um, but yeah, it's this stage keeps like just keeps impressing. I mean, they should maybe start if every time they had Crosswind Chaos tweeted before stages in Europe, we had a stage like this. I'd be a happy man. This stage always delivers. But I don't know. Plat looks good. Do you believe in Ava de Pol now? Uh, for GC, stage? yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, he, really, Yates is behind in GC. That's a big thing. But do you think his climbing will be better than San Juan? Oh, I think so. I think his climbing yeah. should be better than San Juan. We're further into the season. We're not talking about the first race of the season. We're not t- talking about a high altitude either. These are climbs that are draft climbs. Jabal Alfie is steeper than Jabal Jais, but Jabal Jais is a pure draft climb. While that should definitely not be an issue. Even Ghana can get into the first group there. But Jais is is steep, but still drafty. So I think that I think that Evenpool should be good. But I, I kind of want to go with the dark side, with the the outsider, with Luke Plapp as like the the pick for the race, just because I I like the underdogs. <laughs> my pick. I, it's not my <laughs> pick because I've stolen it. 
Yeah, he's got the podcast interview boost. Hopefully, we look. I would really like him to do well. I think this does set up the race nicely because UAE Yates are going to have to be aggressive on the climbing stages, that's for sure, because they ain't making a minute back in the TTT tomorrow. But I hope you enjoyed the podcast live for the first time on YouTube. No mistakes, but as normal on podcast. <laughs>